Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. So, let's talk about something pretty big, because Blizzard have, pretty much when they're in the final stages of the beta, implemented what is essentially the largest change to what I'm going to call current expansion leveling uh, that they've ever done. So, you know, 50 through 60, up to the new level cap. And that does sound like a really big claim for me, but it really isn't. Like, this isn't just the case of, oh, it's Legion now, you can do the zones in, in any order. No, what Blizzard are doing is they're now making it so that you can actually, on your alts of course, make your end game covenant choice up front at level 50, and then do any zone in any order, just that now when you do them, the main quests are going to be gone and there'll be world quests there. At its worst, it's fragmented and confusing and lacks loads of polish. At its best, it could be like leveling up with Diablo 3's Adventure Mode. It could even tap into that map-clearing satisfaction that many Guild Wars 2 players have had for years, and hey, it could maybe even help you get your endgame goals while you're leveling. Right now, the answer to any of that is that it's bloody complicated and it's all a bit ropey. But if you're ever going to have an alt, this is going to matter to you. And if Blizzard somehow are able to pull this off, even though it's a bit last minute, then they could actually be in for a really satisfying leveling experience. So that's what we're going to be looking into today. Of course, it is almost the end of the month. And uh, hey, Patreon number one, bam, we've, uh, we're now at stage with these really cool custom, like sort of hard card um, envelopes. That's kind of fun. But I actually get it. Those, of course, Warrior Month, so the Warrior Pin, as well as, hey, hey, art, and a sticker that I don't currently have on me right now. And, uh, yeah, the Patreon, obviously, is one of the best places to support what we're doing across all of what we're doing, and, uh, hey, it's why we're increasing the size of the team, and we are getting more cool content made for the whole audience. So, thank you very much for all your support, and with that said, let's go. Okay, what has happened? Because if you've not been paying attention, you might be a bit confused, and that would be fair enough. So, Blizzard decided to revamp alt leveling. Here was their old plan. You would choose a covenant, and then you would just do the zones of Shadowlands in any order. You would still do those zones, though, with their full story quest. Now, the pros there was that it was, in many ways, pretty simple. It required no extra work from Blizzard. It was an easy-to-understand concept, right? You make your covenant choice, and then you just do the same leveling you did on your first character. There you go. But there were some cons. The issue Blizzard really felt, and that many testers felt, uh, testers felt too, is that, like, it was very jarring. Because you would have just chosen Night Fae, and then you'd be doing the Kyrian questing, but in such a way where the Kyrians are, you know, they've just met you for the first time, you're kind of... It just didn't really make that much sense, and it could feel jarring. And that is why Blizzard has scrapped that old leveling flow. They have implemented a new plan, and that is called Threads of Fate. So, after doing the Maw intro, which I do hope you'll be able to skip, you can talk to the Fate Scribe, and you can choose between regular leveling or Threads of Fate for your new character. Now, regular leveling, that is exactly what you would expect. You do the levels in a linear order, you sample all the Covenant abilities, and then, of course, you make your choice at max level. There then is Threads of Fate. Let's talk about what that is. Threads of Fate, technically speaking, is a campaign of five chapters. Chapter one is very quick, it's just selecting your Covenant Oribos, and then chapters two through five, which you can see if you just sort of hover over the little UI in the questing frame, is just completing the meta quest, as I call it, of each zone. And after completing chapter one, you basically just are given a map, and it says, which zone do you want to go to first? When you go to that zone, you get the zone's meta quest. It's a big bar that you fill by doing all content in that zone. And that zone content includes side quests. So, you know, when you're normally leveling up, you're doing your big, like, primary quest line, but there will be little side quests. So, you do the side quests. Now, you don't do the linear campaign. The main campaign is not there. Instead, you find bonus objectives, just like in, say, Warlords of Draenor or any other modern expansion. Now, those bonus objectives appear in areas that previously were full of, like, quests for the main zones campaign, which of course you don't get. And then on top of that, you also will get world quests. And basically the way that it works is by doing quests, rares, world quests, and dungeons, you will fill up the zones quest bar. Now, once you have filled up that bar, you go back to the main quest sort of NPC for Threads of Fate, and they will give you a bunch of gear and some experience. 
and that's it, you'll have done that zone. You rinse and repeat that for each of the other zones of the Shadowlands, and there you go, you have completed Threads of Fate. That is what Threads of Fate is, let's talk about why it isn't working. Yes, Threads of Fate has issues, and we're going to begin by talking about UX problems, with UX being the common industry lingo for user experience. So, what are those issues? Well, bonus objectives don't always appear on the world map, so players will have to use external guides. But it's that thing where whenever you hit the M key, if you're thinking about this, where it should feel a bit more like an adventure mode in Diablo 3, it would be quite good if you could see all that was available to you, so you could, you know, go and blast through the zone. I feel like it's that Diablo 3 adventure adventure mode vibe that's probably what's going to work best here. But yes, sometimes bonus quests appear in your map, sometimes they don't. Why? Who knows? Then you can also get a world quest on top of a bonus quest. So you can have two fill the bars. At one point, I filled one bar and then it just appeared again. I had to fill it again. I'm fairly sure that's because I had a world quest on top of a bonus quest, and they might actually have been the same thing. So, that was a bit of a jarring, janky experience. Then, also, there is a, another problem. You fill the zone sort of meta quests bar, you fill that bar long before you have done all of the content within that zone. Now, the way that it works, then, is you return the sort of main zone quest, and the NPC tells you, oh, Thank you for helping. The other Covenants need help. You must go back to Oribos and select another one. But here's the problem. What happens when you have done the, like, the Threads of Fate, like the full thing for every single zone? Well, you'll have done every zone a little bit. You'll have filled the bar, went back to the NPC. The NPC tells you to go do it again for another zone. And you'll end up, by the time that's all done, being level 56. And you will have half done all the Shadowland zones. Now, then you're in a situation where you're 56, you're out cold, you don't really know what you're doing, so what you then have to do is just go back to all of those zones and sort of finish up your, your unfinished business. And the thing is, if you've halved on a zone, and then you do a whole bunch of other ones, and you go back to it, well, yeah, you're just finishing up your unfinished business, it's going to feel like a little bit of a hodgepodge and not that satisfying. Uh, now, what you should do is you should wait and complete most of the content in a zone before you move on. But the problem then is the game NPCs expressly tell you to move onwards fast. This is confusing. It doesn't really work. You are basically doing the flow until you hit level 56, and then that's it. At that stage with my level 56 character, I could not go to my covenant and progress anything. All I found when I went to the Heart of the Forest was a weekly quest for the Maw that I don't think I should have been able to get, um, but of course since my character hadn't done the Maw introduction quest, I couldn't go into the Maw, so it basically didn't work. So there you go, user experience problems. Essentially, it's just hard to intuit what you're supposed to do, and it's not at a stage where you as a player feel like you just hit that groove and can go. It's not really coming together. Another reason why it's not working is bugs, and this is a bit of a general point as well. As an example, there was a Maldraxxus world quest that was bugged. I needed these speed boost runes in the floor, and uh, they just didn't spawn for me. And uh, that happened a few times, and they did respawn in some cases, but for the final leg of the quest, they never did. It just didn't really work. Then, the Fates, or the Threads of Fate NPC, was in a different settlement, not a different location, a different settlement to where the map indicated for Maldraxxus. Again, that's just a lack of polish. Then also, there was a Maldraxxus quest that was bugged, such that I could not loot the quest item that I needed from the NPCs, and yes, I validated this was not me losing my marbles, it just didn't work. And there's just a few problems like this, and of course, in a Threads of Fate-like experience where it's less about the main quests, of course, I think the main quests, I haven't really found any bugs in them recently, um, but for some of these side things, and the world quests, just felt a bit ropey. Feels like they have basically just got less testing, and uh, yeah, in a Threads of Fate experience that is entirely leaning on that side content to get its job done, well, it just doesn't really feel like it's there yet. What I've just covered are the very simple reasons why it's not working, but I think what's more important is to talk about why it is failing its promise. And this is not to beat up Blizzard, this is because if it actually meets its promise, I think this could be hype as hell for the game. Okay, progress that matters. Here's the thing, right? Imagine this, you select your covenant, you get your abilities, and then you get going. The promise of this 
is alt leveling that is relevant to endgame. So doing your covenant campaign while you're still leveling up, right? Your endgame covenant campaign. If you could do that while you're leveling, then that would be really quite exciting. At doing your covenants callings, which are basically emissaries, that would be a good thing to be doing while you're leveling up. It would be quite satisfying. Doing your covenants weeklies, things like the Maw stuff, getting your souls, that would all be quite satisfying. And for these things, there is essentially no reason why you can't do them while you are leveling. Doing the war campaign stuff, as an example in the past, kind of just felt pants because you're doing a whole bunch of content and what do you get? You know, 50 gold. You don't get any XP or anything like that. It doesn't really slot into your character's progression. It doesn't really have relevant rewards, things like that. You know, you're doing all this great quest content the Blizzard have made at Endgame, right where quests don't really matter to your character that much. But doing that type of quest content while you're leveling up, I think that would be perfect, especially because you're doing what would normally be your Endgame camp campaign, but you're still you're getting XP, you're leveling up, you're just in that really good core loop of World of Warcraft that I think does work well. So my core point here, leveling up via doing your class order hall campaigns in Legion would have been pretty sweet. It would have been fun. And I think the same goes for the Covenant campaigns. Now, of course, there should probably only be so far that you could go before, you know, you need to be max level, but I think you get the point. Now, the thing here is that much of this promise is stuff the Blizzard teased with alt leveling, it's just not really there right now. So basically, I think that while you're leveling up, you should be able to do your callings, earn renown, do some of your weeklies, and just feel like you're really progressing your character and engaging with it in a relevant way to you. Because of course, at this stage, this is for your alt. That means you're an end game player, and that just is a different experience. And I think if Blizzard can tap into that, it will actually be really good. The other way it's not meeting its promise is the adventure mode feel. This could feel like Diablo 3 adventure mode. Right now though, the UX problems that I mentioned hamper its ability to do that. And that's really a pretty quick point. Overall though, those UX problems can be fixed pretty quickly, but how it fails its promise is linked to the current design. Now who knows how far along Blizzard actually is with this internally, but the thing is, they haven't really communicated uh, much with testers about what their full vision is here. That means we can't give good feedback and, well, we're going to talk about the calendar and the clock pretty soon. What can be done? Well, the bugs can be fixed. And if it weren't so close to launch, I wouldn't actually bother mentioning this because it would be obvious to everyone because it's an alpha or beta. But it's clear that Shadowlands, I would say in broad strokes, it's pretty solid, pretty great. But it's in that state where it just, it needs some more bug squashed, it needs some more tuning. As another example, you know, people think about this sometimes purely in terms of bugs, but there's just minute tuning to content that makes it feel good. A thing I've had, some world quests and bonus quests are way shorter or way longer than other ones. It's very inconsistent. And then within doing, a, say, a bonus objective, well, killing mobs can give you like 1-2% to 2 progress for doing, relatively speaking, quite a bit of work, but then instantly clicking a floor item with no cast bar, that could give me 5% progress. That's just the sort of thing where it felt like it broad strokes, the bonus objective was there, but it just hadn't really had the tuning it needed to actually work that well. So basically, there's some bugs and oddities, there's some UX problems, and there is some tuning that needs to be done. I would not normally worry about that, but oh, Let's look at the date and then the release date of this, and suddenly those concerns are just a little bit more pressing. So to make a long point quickly, they can do some more tuning and they can do some bug squashing. Okay, XP and length modification. The meta quest for each zone right now gives you 10,000 XP. That's less than a bonus objective. It's around the same as doing a regular quest. Then world quests, which normally do take more work than a regular quest, only give you 7,500 XP. That's actually less than many regular quests. None of this feels balanced or tuned. It does not feel good. What is the solution? Well, I would say this. I think Blizzard should double the duration of the zone meta quest. So right now, what takes you from zero to 100%, I think that should be zero to 50. I think that quest should be way longer so that you're actually doing way more of the zone. And I then think the amount of XP that you get for doing that big objective that is tied to the whole zone, I think that should be way more. Instead of 10K XP, maybe 50K, maybe 80K. It should feel really good. 
Right now, each zone should be slower and more considered, rather than being a quick fill the bar grab bag, which is what the system currently does nudge people towards doing. Instead, I think it should very much be, wow, here I go, I've, I've looked at this whole zone, how am I going to tear through this in a fun way and then fill up the big bar and get a big massive amount of XP? Right now, it's just not long and considered enough for that to actually happen. It really is quite strange. Because basically, if you fill the bar too quickly, but then still need the rest of the XP from doing content in a zone, then you feel like you're just mopping up loose ends. You feel like you're not engaging with the system right, because right now, you feel like you should fill up the bar for each zone, and then you should be good. But it's basically the Threads of Fate system, the flow that it guides you through, is not actually in line with what you need to do to level your character up to max level. Which, when Threads of Fate is supposed to be the way that you level your character up to max level, is, what I would say, a little bit of a problem. So basically, make that bar far longer, so that you're doing far more of the zone. And then, which means it'll be a greater achievement, people will feel better when they complete it, and then, of course, reward that with way more XP. Do that right, and I think the balance will be totally in line. People will be doing complete zones, and the big sort of bing of XP that they'll get at the end will feel very satisfying. Another thing Blizzard can do is embrace the alt. Players who are doing this right now know they're doing it on an alt. They already have another max level character. We should embrace that fact. For me, that means the Covenant campaign should be a part of the Threads of Fate leveling process. I mean, why not? We're already a Maw Walker. We're already a member of our Covenant. So let us do our Covenant World Quest callings. Because that's the sort of thing we'll be doing at Endgame anyway. Let us do that. You know, let's get that into the Threads of Fate system. You can get some Endgame resources, some anima for your Covenant, a big chunk of XP. And also, this would shake up your leveling flow on a daily basis, which I think would be pretty good. I would then also say, embrace the game, right? We've embraced the alt, now we need to embrace the game. This is a very gamey feature, right? This is not a sort of slow-paced, immersive, you're going through your narrative campaign, which is what you get in your first time through. So if this is the more gamey version where you just select Threads of Fate and bam, you're, you're off free, you can do whatever you want, let's embrace the fact that you can do that. And for me, that means battleground leveling should be more viable. Is there any way we could make Torghast in any way relevant while we're leveling up? Can we just not bring all of these things to bear on that alt leveling process? I think that if Blizzard are able to patch up some of the issues, fix up how the XP is balanced, and move a little bit of the initial covenant progression into the questing period of the game, then this overall can make a very satisfying experience for players. But right now, it's just not really there, and let's just talk about the actual state of this. To finish the video off, why am I worried? Why am I hopeful? Worried is something that I am, it is something that I don't want to be, but it is something that I am. And why is that? Well, this entire Threads of Fate system came in very late in the day for this expansion's development cycle. I mean, imagine revamping the leveling process pretty much in the final six weeks of beta. That is really quite big. That's quite a big thing to be doing. It's not something they've done in the past. And that is something that is inherently worrying to me. Now, what is also, I think, a, a little bit more sort of directly worrying to me is that, you know, testers who are a bit more systemic in how they approach the game, they'll be able to do this fine. But if you look at, you know, my experience of this, Mr. GM's experience, people who've been testing this stuff, we're all saying that, like, we're the people who are paying attention to these aspects of the game, and to us it feels like a confusing and jarring experience. For a general audience, what's on the beta right now will not work. And you'll probably think, as many people do, well, obviously, the current development build internally at Blizzard is ahead of the beta. To which I would say, yeah, and even if that is the case, then it's really not that good news, actually. Now, it is good news in that it could have more iteration, but also, uh, if the current build that's going to be shipped is something that barely ever makes it onto beta, it means that it doesn't get beta testing, which means it doesn't get, say, the bug squishing that happens on beta, and it also doesn't get the design feedback that happens on beta as well. So even if that is the case, and what is on beta is not what's going to be live, and it's, you know, an old iteration and, and whatever, well, if Blizzard update the beta next week, then that'll be well in, well, that'll be the first week of October, right? Maybe the second week of October. At which point, uh, the game's almost out anyway. This is so close to launch. This is such a major feature, so close to launch. 
I think anyone of the right mind would be a little bit spooked at, uh, at the timing of this situation. So that's why I'm worried, right? It's really, really close. It still has a bunch of clear, glaring issues. We've not really had that much communication from Blizzard, so it's just a bit spooky. Am I hopeful? Yes. You can be worried and you can be hopeful, and I am both. Eventually, this could be great. I think it's really, really clear that if this was iterated upon, say, some of the suggestions that I've, uh, that I've had, I'm sure uh, internal ideas that Blizzard have that are significantly better, if those things could be implemented, then this could be really, really exciting. And never underestimate the power of lampshading and reframing things. Look at what Adventure Mode did for Diablo 3. It was just a slightly different framing of stuff and a different reward system for the same content you could be doing anyway, but it worked with players. It got the results. So I think that uh, it really could happen here. I'm just not completely sold on if it will happen by launch. And that's purely just because, you know, Shadowlands, it almost seems like, I'm sure you've seen that, uh, you know, that meme of Game of Thrones, right? And it's like season eight and, you know, all the text is like squished in. This is the great thing about, you know, videos being visual because uh, whoever's editing this, we can, you know, put the little image up. But that's what Shadowlands feels like. I mean, it really does. Aside from this video, you've heard about the Covenant changes. We had these massive expanses of not that much happening on, on Alpha and Beta. And now we're, you know, four weeks away and Blizzard's like, okay, here's all the changes. And you're like, oh man, you know, obviously look, Blizz aren't doing this for, uh, you know, they're not doing this because they want it to be like this. You know, they did have a pandemic happen and probably Activision busting their balls, uh, you know, with like a really soft release date that they probably can't move. So, you know, this is not to be sort of personal them. It's just right now, this is a situation we're at. And uh, yeah, it's iffy as hell. There you go. Threads of fate. Why I'm worried, why I'm hopeful, the whole situation with it, how it works. You know it all now. Uh, do you think this could be good, right? This idea of the, the main linear quest, gone. Replace the bonus objectives. Uh, you're just free to do whatever the hell you want in the world. How do you think that could be good, right? What are the fun sort of even more, you know, embracing the alt, embracing how it's gamey and the fourth wall's a little bit broken because we're doing this and our second character and all that stuff. Embracing all that, how do you think this could be the most fun possible? Let me know down below. That is it for this video. Thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll get a bit more fixed up by the time that you guys all experience it on live. Thank you.